Hey, this is Trevor Sternad from the Black Dahlia Murder here, and you're listening to the Ever Black Podcast. Hey, human scum, this is odorous from Quark. We're going to battle Fear Factory. This is George Quark, Commander Fisher. This is Jasmine Devil Drop. This is Wade from Our Lost Enemy. This is Mike Nixon, Cool Fellow, 17. He is at Wednesday 13. This is Bruce Allen. This is Rex from Club Devil Hill. This is Gary Boone from Sepulchor, and you're listening to Ever Black Podcast. Before we go into this episode of the Ever Black Podcast, we just need to give a shout out to our show supporters, the Occult Clothing Brand Electric, which love amazing apparel from shirts to hoodies to hats to beanies, dresses and more. Check out their full range at electricwitch.com.au and put in the code EVERBLACK for 20% off your order. Also, don't forget to subscribe, rate and review the Ever Black Podcast on Spotify and iTunes podcast streams and see all our video interviews on the Ever Black YouTube channel. You can also read all our articles and reviews at everblack.com.au all right on with the show Frida it's uh awesome to talk to you brother how's everything going over where you are I mean considering everything it is it is all right I mean it is what it is but uh yeah it's uh I don't think Norway is the worst place to be actually because uh, of course we do have we do have uh, our fair amounts of, you know, the regulations and all that shit to, you know, to relate to. But uh, all in all, I think it's okay. I've been doing interviews now for a couple of weeks and uh, I talk to people all over the world how things are. And I mean, yeah, <laughs> I consider myself lucky <laughs> because, yeah, a lot of people it's... are having a real struggle. and uh, We are more or less, I mean, we have few people and we are far, far apart. So, uh, yeah. It's okay. Yeah, it's, I've, I've been talking to a lot of people all over the world as well, and uh, it's it really varies, man. You know, I, yeah. where we are on the Gold I don't know if you've ever been to the Gold Coast in, in Australia, but we are really lucky here in Queensland. Mm. Like, But there's people down south that have been on lockdowns and, and everything. But, man, you know, as long as we're all together supporting metal and supporting each other until it all opens up again, then that's, that's what we've got to do, hey? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, well, of course, I mean, we're talking about the new uh, Einherrier. Did I say it right this time? Einherrier album, North Star, which comes out uh, Friday, this Friday, tomorrow. Tomorrow, actually, yeah. Yeah, man. I've been lucky enough to hear it, and uh, it's so triumphant, dude. Uh, The reviews have been insane as well. Absolutely. Yeah, great. It is. It is really cool, you know, to get that that kind of feedback because, uh, of course, you never know before or no, while you're working on an album, uh, uh, you don't. You don't, of course, at that at that point, you don't consider how how this will be received. But when the day comes, uh, I think it actually does matter, you know, because you, you have put a lot into it, and uh, it is cool to get, you know, the proper kind of feedback, you know, <laughs> which is. The proper, I mean, by good. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, we are happy. Absolutely. And it, as you said, it makes it all worth it. You know, you, you busted yeah, your ass in the studio for so long. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, uh, and uh, you can also, uh, I mean, on, the, on, on some reviews, you can see that, uh, you know, the people have actually really dived into it, you know, going mm. deep into the material. And, uh and sometimes you also read the reviews uh, that you know you can tell that they they haven't really listened to this you know <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and that is kind of i mean when you're working on a on an album which takes i don't know from from you start writing to the process is done mixing is probably a year or so whatever you know and uh, that is a lot of work and I, and uh, and if a uh, reviewer just to write that off in you know ten minutes, just listen to half the album and write some, yeah, bogus shit. That's uh, that's not okay. <laughs> but it is it is really cool when uh, when people are diving into it and you know, uh, and yeah, it is uh, the yeah the feedback has been overwhelming. So, so it is really cool. And uh, the video for uh, Blood and, and the Iron Man, that's an mm. amazing video. I love all the battle stuff, which is really cool, but it's all the shots in that big, I don't know what you call it. Is it a shed or a barn? Like, it's huge. Uh, actually, it's actually it's a boathouse. Okay. Uh, 
because this is uh, this is at the place called Avalsnes, uh, which is yeah just around the corner from where we live, and uh, uh, <clears throat> that place has a really lot of history. That is the first kind of king seat in in Norway, uh, yeah. so this is more where the whole country was born, more or less. Uh, so uh, what they've done there in, uh, for the last. 20 something years they have built like a viking village like a proper one which looked exactly the same as it did a thousand years ago and uh, that's the place where where we shot uh, the blood on the iron yeah how so old is uh, how old is it uh that exact thing isn't that old but it is it is a copy of how they built oh. both houses back in the day uh yeah so so they have a there are different types of buildings there, you know, uh, like a, a long house, like a, this party kind of, uh, you know, uh, main house. And, and there's a boat house and there's a lot of, you know, small houses as well. And all of it are, are kind of built the same way it was back in the day. So it's a, it's a really cool place. And also there's a, uh, there's a Norwegian TV series. I don't know if you have that down there, but it is on the net. Netflix in English that is called yes. Norseman. Yeah, uh, that is shot uh, at the same place. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, the, I think it's really cool. Uh, it's a, it is a really cool place, and of course the video turned out really cool as well. So yeah. Oh it, it, man, it, yeah, it's the scale of it is is massive. But you know the yeah. album as well. I mean, as we were talking about, like there's so many good tracks on this. Like, like I really like the last last one, Chasing the Serpent. Mm. That's yeah. a re- like right at like there's I don't know like right at the end it it seems to goes into I wouldn't say like a proggy type thing but it's it, it's it's really really cool like what's where was it, where we come with that yeah it's a, it's different <laughs> absolutely and yeah. it also seems that uh, that's a song that is uh, kind of growing on you because I have uh, I've been talking to people that maybe did a review of the album a couple of weeks prior to the interview and. Uh, when they did the review, maybe some of them didn't like that song that much. And a couple of weeks later, when they talk to me, that is their favorite song. So uh, it's a it's a type of song that uh, that maybe grows a bit on you. Mm. And it's uh, I think it's the most kind of your know, different song on the album as well. Uh, and also when I when I wrote it, it was. Uh, when I first did the vocals, I did the same kind of vocals that is you know on the rest of the album, and that that was kind of cool. But I didn't get you know the the vibe I was looking for, so I was trying different stuff. And uh, the vocals I ended up doing is a bit different from the rest of the album as well. And yeah, so I think that kind of you know fits the whole you know the whole thing. So yeah, I'm quite happy with how that turned out in the end. Mate, I, everyone's digging it. And it's uh, all the praise is well deserved. Like I think it's I don't know I think it's one of the best things you've done. Really? Do you feel that? Yeah, yeah. I uh, <laughs> yeah. What can I say? I mean, it's our new album. Uh, yes, I do <laughs> feel that. Uh, but and you also, know. I mean, we are not uh, we are not youngsters anymore. We are in the mid forties, and we've done this for you know uh, one fourth of a you know century <laughs> so <laughs> we should <clears throat> by every means we should be shit by now <laughs> you know uh, and most bands are after <laughs> after doing this for so long but i kind of feel that we are on the top of our game here <laughs> after 25 years so i kind of you know, uh, yeah uh, i am really happy where we are right now i think yeah, i think the band is killer and we sound good and we write good stuff so yeah it's uh, uh, it's a good vibe in the band right now it's interesting that you know some bands they they get to that that point in their career where they're just absolutely crushing it. They find that next level, and then some other bands they just seem to chase their tail and disappear. You know, they yeah. sort of hit that age, and I don't know whether it's their. I wouldn't say they lose touch, but they 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 seem to phase themselves out in, in their writing. I don't know. It's weird, isn't it? It's a, it's very very weird. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, also, it's it's kind of impossible to tell, you know, how uh, how how things, you know, uh, success or whatever, what that does to you. It's uh, it's it's hard to tell, you know. But uh, 
we, I mean, we are doing this this exact same way as we've always done, and and we have, and we've had like you know zero success along the way. So <laughs> that we are not influenced by that, that you know, uh, at all. So yeah, uh, maybe that's why we're doing good good stuff still. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but another thing is uh, your first album. Dragons of the North that came out like twenty five years ago, and it's exactly, being reissued yeah. uh, tomorrow as well, I believe. Um, yeah. mm. Man, it's like everything's coming full circle in a way for you. Did yeah, you feel that? Uh, yes. Yeah, I mean, uh, we are re-signing or with Napalm now, and we haven't been there for like twenty five years. And they, yeah, uh, the, and they really released released the Dragons of the North in ninety six. So it's just kind of natural, I think, to. When when we are back now, it's it's kind of natural to do a proper uh, reissue of that album because it has never seen it has never seen a proper vinyl release or anything. So now what we've done now, uh, we just took the original recordings and we did a remaster both for digital and finally we did a proper vinyl master for it. So it uh, it sounds good and it's yeah the whole package is is really good. Uh, so yeah, it's. It feels good to finally have that, you know, released in a proper way, you know, on vinyl and everything. So, yeah. Are you are you a vinyl collector yourself? Uh, yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm not a collector per se, but uh, I do have uh, I do have my bands, of course, uh, and uh, I do buy vinyl. But uh, I tend to buy <laughs> the same albums I al- already have, you know, in different versions. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> So uh, yeah, I'm. I really love love you know the '80s metal stuff that we grew up with. So that's the stuff I I'm still buying. You know, uh, either I'm looking for you know originals from the '80s, or yeah. I do, or I will, you know, just buying duplets or re reissues or whatever. And also now many bands they are from the '80s. They are kind of going into this okay forty year thing. You know, like Motorhead with the great you know, box sets and stuff. So. There are so many fantastic uh, releases, you know. The packages are so amazing and a filled mm-hmm. with all kinds of stuff. So it's a uh, yeah, uh, and I'm a, I'm a real sucker, you know, for <laughs> for <80s laughs> metal. So, and also, uh, I love nostalgia. So it's a uh, yeah, it's uh, it's cool. Right? <laughs> it's really cool. So I just keep buying the same albums over and over again. You're not the only one. I got a mate who literally like he's got a whole room in his house. That's just yeah. all vinyl, and it's he's got multiple versions of, you know, like <laughs> all the Zeppelins, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. and all the different that. releases from all around the world and stuff. He's nuts for <laughs> it. He's nuts. Uh-huh. But it's been saying that. Have you have you cranked Dragons of the North on on vinyl yourself? Have you got your copy? I've got my copy. Uh, I have uh, actually. I haven't checked it yet. <laughs> oh. It's been re- it's been really busy days. And, yeah. Um, and also, we have we have something as crazy as a gig tomorrow as well. We are actually playing a gig tomorrow um, because, uh, like I said, where uh, we live on the west coast, it, yeah. it isn't all that bad. So we are still allowed to have uh, concerts for up to. It was two hundred, but now they have uh, turned it down to one hundred people. You know, seated and all that stuff. Uh, yeah, <clears throat> socially distance and all that crap. But we are still allowed to have concerts, so we are having one on Friday and one on Saturday now. So it's it will be our first gig in a year. <laughs> but Whoa. it is what it is. But it, you know, it's, it's only for hundred people. But at least it's better than you know playing for no one on that streaming stuff, which yeah. is just awkward. Uh, this is this is at least you know in front of some people, and also we kind of get some sort of you know mark that okay the album is out we are act- we are, we are playing a gig having a few beers just yeah have it's a good, good time, way to, really good way to celebrate mate i mean you're celebrating yeah. you know really two albums so i think it's that's yeah. pretty awesome man you don't really get yeah, to do yeah. that so you know it's what a what a time to to drink those beers and and turn it up that's for sure man even if it's yeah. 50 100 people whoever man it's going to be I think it's going to be special. I wish I could be there. I'll be there in spirit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, great. <laughs> it's more like an event uh, than you know, an actual concert now. It's, uh, so it's a, uh, it's so rare to do that stuff, you know. Mm. So uh, yeah, 
take what you can get, you know. That's it. And throughout your career, I mean, you guys have played some insane shows like Varkin. Like, that's my dream to go to that mm. dude. Like, that's my yeah. absolute dream. Like, as I said before, I'm all the way down here in the arse end of the world in Australia where, like, we're so <laughs> yeah. far away from anything. But yeah. one day I'll get there. But what's it like standing up on that stage at that festival? I mean, you sure, I'm sure you've done one to equal it, but to me, that's a special one. What's, what's that been like? to soak that in uh, it, it is kind of insane uh, we played Vakin a few times uh, on different stages but uh, one year we played a main stage yeah and and even though we play really early it, it was you know you have like 30 40 thousand something in front of the stage and that's just insane you can't you can't really comprehend yeah or you you can't really grasp the amount of people that is there because it's it's just sick. <laughs> you know, we are used to playing festivals for for a couple of thousand people, you know, and that's uh, uh, yeah, that's what we kind of normally do. But uh, this is uh, that sized festivals are are just insane. But then again, I do actually uh, maybe like the smaller ones even better, though. You know, just yeah, everything is kind of everything is smaller, you know. So just going from from one end to the next, you know, going from the backstage area to to the stage or to uh, the transport or whatever, take you half a day at work. <laughs> so it's, uh, <laughs> it's just insane, you know, the size of it. But it's cool. It's uh, I think it's really cool. Uh, yeah, that's you awesome, do have man. some proper. Uh, you do have some uh, some proper festivals in Australia as well, don't you? We never yeah. played in Australia actually, and that's that's going to change. That's got to change, brother. You got to get there. Yeah, you boys yeah, have to we, get down here. You we know? do. Mm. I mean, we've got Download Festival, which is which is pretty awesome. Um, mm. We've got Good Things Festival, um, and there's heaps of other ones as well, like heaps of other little ones, all that are just metal. Like it's mm. it's the way to do it, man. So one day you'll come down here, and we'll we'll buy you a proper Australian beer, none of that Foster's shit, <laughs> and um, right. And and show you our our crazy country, but uh, you know, in, in saying that, like, um, what what else you got planned for the rest of the year? Have you got? I know that w there was a tour that was planned, right? Or is planned? Yeah, I mean, uh, yes, uh, we have actually. I mean, the whole, the cycle for this album was supposed to be, you know, uh, a festival run, a Norwegian tour, and a European tour. That that was the plan, but of course, all that went to shits and. It, it is the way things are right now it is it is impossible really to plan ahead so uh, yeah we do have plans but i don't really see anything happening in this year mm. uh, might be a bit piss, uh, pessimistic but i think it's i think it's just the realistic to think like that you know because Everything, uh, everything else is a bonus. <laughs> you know, if, uh, <laughs> if we are allowed to do something cool, we will we will try to get something up and running as quickly as absolutely possible. But I don't think we will see that in 2021. So we are looking at 2022 now. So uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, like I said, it's it is impossible really to plan ahead. So yeah, just have to take it as a as it comes, really. But tell you what, as soon as as soon as soon uh, things start opening up safely, of course, just touring is just going to be a whole new level because people are just going to be wanting it so much. Just, they, you know, it's going to be so emotional as well, I think. Yeah, and uh, I mean, uh, I think I think everyone, everyone is, is just really ready to <laughs> tour the world. <Yeah. laughs> people have been, you know, home for... A year and uh, and that will you know probably be two years by the time we're done so uh yeah it's uh i think i think everyone is really really ready to you know rock out on this shit <laughs> is there anything happening with batted no uh no that was just a thing we did you know uh when we when we took a break from uh, in harrier and yeah. uh, we just needed to do something else and we didn't want to 
water down the name, you know. So we yeah. just okay, we put this on ice and we just create something new. And uh, yeah, we did a we did an album and a few tours and uh, had some good fun. And uh, actually, we did. I think it was ten years after the album. Mm. Uh, we did just one show here in town. Just on a small, sweaty club, sold out. Play the album, cover, a couple of cover songs, just for the just for the fun of it, you know. Uh, and that was that was really cool. But uh, I don't really see us doing that again. That was just you know a local thing for friends, just for fun. So yeah, we well, definitely got uh, bigger things ahead with the band and this album, man. That's for sure. Yeah, I mean, I really hope so. Yeah, Australia, mate. Let's do it. Come on, tell the boys. <laughs> we'll, yeah, we'll, yeah, I will. we'll sneak you down here on a boat or something. However, we got to do it. Don't care. We want to see Sounds you, boys. Good. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, mate, it's been an absolute pleasure hanging out with you. North Star is out everywhere right now. Well, it will be by the time this goes up tomorrow. Uh, go get it. And uh, all the best to you and the boys. And uh, rock out on the weekend, mate. Will do. All right. Thank you, man. Thank you. <laughs>